Aum. Vapustu shadi bhi ko shair yuktang yuktya vagata taha. Atmana mantarang shudhang vivitya tandulang yata. Vapuhu, the form. Tushadi bhi, with husk, etc. Koshai, with sheaths. Yuktang, covered. Yuktya, by logical thinking. Avagatatata, by grinding rice in a mortar. Atmanang, the self. Antarang, within. Shudhang, pure. Vivichyat, should separate. Tandulang, rice grain. Yata, just as. Through discriminative self-analysis and logical thinking, one should separate the pure self within from the sheaths, as one separates the rice grain from the husk, bran, etc., by grinding it. Namaste. So, this verse begins a section that talks about how, how to overcome the influence of the body. Not the body, <laughs> all three or five of them, depending on how you analyze it. You can say the gross body, the subtle body, and the causal body, or you can say the five koshas, the food body, energy body, mental body, intelligence body, and bliss body. So, in any case, discrimination is necessary. Viveka. Viveka means distinctions, separating one thing from the other. So the first separation one should make is between the gross body and the subtle body, between the subtle body and the causal body, or between the five pancha koshas. And so observe yourself and discriminate. Oh, this is my gross body. This is my energy body. This is my subtle body, my mental body, my intelligence. This is my consciousness, my bliss. And in this way, start to categorize the different functions. This is discrimination. Then self-analysis means, what do I do when I have a problem? Well, first I have to identify where the problem is. And then I have to understand what the problem is. So let's say um, I'm feeling lonely. So I have to look, where is this problem? Well, it's primarily in the mental body. The mental body is comparing my life with other people's lives and saying, well, wouldn't I be better off if I had more friends or if I had a companion or whatever? So this is a lack of discrimination. This is like a failure to understand my karma, my individual results coming from my previous activities. And then one should analyze, wait a minute, are these people who have partners and who have a lot of friends really better off than me? And look at them. Look at how they have to compromise to fit in with their partner's expectations and so on. They have to really make a lot of effort and even change themselves to try to fit in with their social environment, their family environment, their work environment, and so on. Is that really worth it? And of course, 
spiritual science would say, no, <laughs> it's not worth it. That rather, one should see that this karma that is coming is totally fair. It's totally right. It is the results of what I did in my past life. And so, I not only I shouldn't try to change it, I can't change it. And it's going to happen to me. Whatever my destiny is, is going to happen to me regardless of any efforts that I make to change it. That's just the way it is, as Buddha would say. That's the way it is. We did these things in the past, and so our present is going to be formed by them, determined by them. If we hurt people, if we injured other living entities in the past, we have to suffer for it now or even in the future, in a future life. So we should understand, first of all, I have to stop doing the things that bring these negative reactions. And, of course, the root of it all is desire. I want this. I want that. I want to do this. I want to be that. I want to have such and such. So take a look in your own mind and use your intelligence to discriminate that neti neti, these things are not me. I am simply the observer. I am not the doer. I am not the possessor. I am not the owner. And I am not the enjoyer. So as soon as we start to think about it with intelligence and self-analysis, we realize that myself is only consciousness and that these different phenomena that arise due to the complex interactions of cause and effect are simply nature doing its thing. It's prakriti. The modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. And if we have acted in the past with passion, desiring this and that, and then taking action to get it, or ignorance, which means not taking action when we should have, or not knowing what to do, and so we do nothing, or even worse, we take some intoxication, or we do something stupid, uh, like eating meat, that's going to affect our future. That's going to bring us suffering in the future. But if we do things in the mode of goodness, like religious activities, study of the scriptures, uh, making ourselves intelligent through self-analysis, through proper diet, through proper exercise, and so on, then we're going to enjoy in the future. We're going to have scope for the spiritual activities that bring us to enlightenment. I mean, consider a person, I don't know, in the West, I guess you see homeless people. In the East, we see a lot of very poor people. So they don't have the opportunity for self-analysis they don't have the opportunity for self-realization because their material circumstances are so pressing that they have to spend their full time and energy just trying to survive. So they don't have opportunity. There is a certain amount of wealth, certain amount of opulence required so that one has the leisure to pursue self-analysis, self-realization. That means one has to have beneficial karma, subha karma, 
good karma, as we call it in the West, and that one should then take the advantage that this wealth and leisure affords us to pursue self-realization, not material enjoyment. Material enjoyment is always disappointing. For one thing, it demands a tremendous effort because of competition. Uh, if you go to a nightclub, if you go to any kind of social event, everybody is competing with everybody else to be cool, to be the smartest guy in the room, you know, to be attractive and so on. And then beyond that, you have to make so much impression on people, isn't it? You have to like fascinate them so that they're attracted to you. And then you have to have a relationship. And boy, this is where the problems really start. <laughs> so it's just not worth it because even if you get the perfect friend, the perfect lover, the perfect relationship or whatever, it's not going to last. Someday it's going to be over. I mean, at the outside, one of you is going to die first. <laughs> but even before that, usually relationships break up where they fail. And even, that might be even worse, where they go into a state of stasis, where there is no communication, no joy, all the things that made the relationship seem desirable in the beginning gradually fade away. Now, we've all experienced this, and this is always going to be true. This is always going to be, like Buddha says, just the way it is, because that is the nature of the world. All phenomena are temporary. They arise, persist for some time, and then fade away. So that includes all these five bodies too. The food body, the energy body, the mental body, the intelligent body, and the bliss body. They are only active insofar as there is a scope within the material creation. And that is determined by your karma. So the one thing is, not to be identified with the karma coming from previous lives, but to see it as a simple reaction of the modes of material nature, the gunas, goodness, passion, and ignorance, a mechanical process. So let it pass. Huh? This too shall pass, and it will. If you know astrology, you can see when things come up, how long they're going to last, because they're usually, well, not usually, always <laughs> caused by some planetary alignment of some kind. But even if you don't know astrology, you can be assured that all this is temporary. It's going to fade away. So don't be attached to it. Let it go by. Just watch it. That'll give you the detachment the distance, the perspective, to see it as something other than yourself. This is not myself. This is not my life. This is not who I am. This is just something that's happening according to the laws of nature. And my position should be not to own it, but to simply watch it and let it pass. And then finally, to see oneself as only Brahman, as only unconditioned awareness, objectless awareness, without any input from the senses, to separate the self by analysis from the mind, intelligence, senses, body, phenomena, the world, all these things. Now, this requires deep meditation. This requires the experience of samadhi. But this can be cultivated. 
This can be trained. You can bring this into your life simply by following this process of neti neti. Huh? It's not this, it's not this, it's whatever comes up, it's not this. This, all this is going to pass away, but you are not going to pass away. You exist eternally as pure awareness. And so if you separate yourself from all these conditioned inputs, you can discover your real self, and your real self is nothing but bliss. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.